Yeah, so this video is on uh, a new, another new graph shape called the truncus. Um, however, in many ways, there's a lot of similarity between the truncus and the hyperbola, and so a lot of the logic that we talked through in the previous video, which was a little longer, um, hopefully we'll be able to move through that a bit more quickly here because we've established um, those ideas through the trunk um, through the hyperbola. So um, here we're looking at graphs with the equation of the form y equals one over x squared. So different from the hyperbola, which was 1 over x, now we've got 1 over x squared. Um, so the graph of the truncus is drawn below. So again, we should be able to think this through a bit, plotting out some points. When x equals 1, 1 over 1 squared is 1, so it goes through the point 1, 1. When x equals 2, we now have 1 over 2 squared, so 1 over 4. So compared to the hyperbola, remember, I'll draw that on in a second, um, Let's stick with the truncus for a bit, sorry, don't let me confuse you. When x equals 3, y will be 1 over 3 squared, so 1 ninth. When x equals 4, we're going to have 1 sixteenth, 1 twenty-fifth, 1 thirty-sixth, 1 forty-ninth, okay? So again, the graph, is, the value of y is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and in fact it's getting smaller more quickly than it did for the hyperbola. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but it's still never going to reach zero, so we still have this asymptote. The other thing, if we think about the negative x values, is with the hyperbola, we had the graph happening down in the third quadrant here. Here with the truncus, we see it's happening in the second quadrant, and that's because we're squaring the x values, and so therefore the negative disappears. So when x is negative 1, we have 1 over 1 over negative 1 all squared, which is 1 over 1. So it's the same as what's happening over here when x equals positive 1, um, and we go through the point negative 1, 1. Again, when x equals 2, uh, negative 2, sorry, we've got 1 over negative 2 all squared, which is the same as 1 over positive 2 squared, so we get the same thing happening. We get this symmetry across the y-axis, okay? So when x equals negative 2, y equals positive 1 quarter. When x is negative 3, y is positive 1 ninth. When x is negative 4, y is positive 1 sixteenth, positive 1 twenty-fifth, etc, etc. So both heading out to the right and the left, the y-value, as x gets bigger, so more positive or more negative, um, the y value is getting closer and closer and closer to zero. As I said, compared to the hyperbola, if we were to plot the hyperbola 1 over x, remember when x, so we'll go through 1, 1 as well, but when x equals 2, y equals a half, a third, a quarter, a fifth, so it stays above the truncus, okay? It doesn't get close to the x-axis as quickly as the truncus does, okay? However, if we think about in here, when x equals 1 half, so here now we've got 1 over 1 half squared, which is 1 over 1 quarter, which is 1 divided by a quarter, 1 times 4 over 1, so we get 4. Okay. So when x equals half, y equals 4. When x equals a quarter, y will be 1 sixteenth. Sorry, when x equals a quarter, y will be 16. Um, so our graph also gets bigger as x gets closer and closer to zero, but it also gets bigger more quickly. So remember the hyperbola only went through half, two, a quarter, four, etc. So it, the hyperbola um, didn't get big as quickly and it also didn't get small as quickly. So the truncus, whilst when we're drawing them on separate axes, we sort of draw the same shape, it is actually technically a different shape. The hyperbola has actually got a lot more symmetry about it, whereas the truncus is much more extreme. Okay, So the hyperbola, if you were to, if we imagine this is our axis here, if we were to draw the hyperbola, we would find that if we mirror it in y equals x, we get the same shape. Okay, whereas the truncus we don't. The truncus is much more extreme. Sorry, so it's much more extreme, and you don't get the same thing if you mirror it in y equals x. Okay, so it's a slightly different shape, but in practice, it's sort of going to be the same in terms of how we go about drawing it. So there's our truncus. So y equals one on x squared. Again, we have asymptotes. So again, we have an asymptote, a horizontal asymptote along the x-axis, so that is when y equals zero, but we also have this vertical asymptote again, because when x equals zero, one over zero squared is undefined. The graph does not um, cross the y-axis. So um, we have a vertical asymptote along the y-axis, which has equation x equals zero. Again, let's think about our transformations. They're gonna apply very much in the same way they did for the hyperbola. So if, my, if f of x is one on x squared, then 
a times f of x is a times 1 on x squared, which we can write as a on x squared. Um, reflection in the x-axis is negative 1 times your function, negative 1 times 1 on x squared, so that is negative 1 on x squared. Again, you can write it as negative 1, on, the negative can stay out the front or it can go into the numerator. That's the same thing, okay? It's like saying, you know, negative 1 half is the same as negative 1 divided by 2. They're the same thing. Um, translation to the right by h units. Okay, so we're replacing the x with x minus h. So we get x minus h all squared on the denominator of the fraction. Translating up and down, we take the function f of x, which in this case is 1 on x squared. And outside of that, separate to that, we add on a value or subtract. And then we can combine those transformations together. So we get a, which if it's negative, would also um, encompass the reflection x minus h all squared plus k. So translation, um, dilation by a factor of a, possibly reflection by um, in the x-axis if a is a negative number, translation to the right by h and translation up by k. Again, translations are what's going to affect your asymptotes. Work out where they go first and then think about whether you need to calculate any x or y intercepts. Also thinking about whether there's been reflection, so which way up your graph is going. Okay, so let's sketch the graph here. Um, y equals negative 1 on 2x squared. So again, straight away I've given you this um, sort of multiplier in the denominator, which we don't see in our general form up here. Okay, so I want to be able to think about this slightly differently. And we did this in the previous um, lesson with the hyperbolas. So I want to think about y equals negative 1 on 2x squared as being the same as negative half times 1 on x squared. So we've got the reflection from the negative, so reflection in the x-axis. So that means instead of our whole graph sitting above the x-axis, it's now going to go down. So um, in terms of the name truncus, let's sorry go back up here, um, I guess you've got that sort of tree trunk kind of sense about it, as the, where that word truncus sort of derives from. Um, and then when we, do, when we reflect it in the y-axis, we could think about it more like an elephant trunk, okay? So, you know, an elephant with its trunk going down instead of um, up. So reflecting in the x-axis, we get this upside down sort of elephant trunk rather than a tree trunk. And then we've also got dilation by a factor of a half from the x-axis. So that's just going to change um, the points that we draw on the graph. It doesn't affect how we draw it so much. Now we haven't translated this graph at all, so the asymptotes remain as the x and y axes. Okay, so I'm going to draw in my y axis in the middle, it's the asymptote. My x axis at the top because it's a different shape to the hyperbola, we, um, the whole graph is going to sit below that asymptote. Alright, so let's think about some points because we don't have any intercepts. So perhaps when x equals 1, we know y will equal negative 1 on 2 times 1 squared, so it's just going to be negative half. And we could put in another one if we want. When x equals negative 1, we should get that symmetry because of the truncus. 1 over 2 times negative 1 all squared is also going to give you negative half. Okay, So we're going to get that nice symmetry of 1 and negative 1 half. So, all right, so we're sort of going to have... We want some symmetry. It helps just to mark some points as well on both sides so to help you with that symmetry. Again, I've drawn myself quite big axes, or perhaps I should have scaled those points a bit further away from the axes to help me. I actually find the truncus really hard to get symmetric, even not on the screen. Um, so, you know, plotting a few points evenly can be helpful. Okay, so I'm going to mark the point 1, negative 1 half, and I'm going to mark the point negative 1, negative 1 half. Technically one point's enough, but I sort of think it's good to have one on each branch if we can as well. Asymptotes are the x and y axes, so they don't need separate labelling in this particular example. Okay, number two. Um, sketch the graph of y equals 1 on x minus 3 all squared minus 1. So again, the step that we're eliminating here is that initial step of deciding what kind of graph shape you have here. So you've got that fraction, but the fact that you've got the denominator squared is how you're going to tell that you've got a truncus versus a hyperbola. Okay, so we've got minus 3 inside here and minus 1 outside here. 
So the minus 3 in there is going to be translation to the right by 3 and the minus 1 outside is going to be translation down by 1. Okay, so right by 3 is going to move our vertical asymptote, x equals 3. Down by 1 is going to move our horizontal ax, um, asymptote, y equals negative 1. Okay, so we want to draw those in first and get a sense of uh, what we're dealing with. So y-axis, x-axis, so we're going to have y equals negative 1 and x equals 3. Now again, you don't need the same scale on the x and y axes. Okay? You just need to be consistent about any x coordinates on your graph and consistent about any y coordinates on your graph. Alright, so I've drawn my two asymptotes in. Um, it's a trunk, it hasn't been reflected, it's going to go this way. So we're actually going to have two x-intercepts and a y-intercept, all of which we need to calculate. Okay, so uh, let's do that. Let's do our y-intercept first. It's easier. There's only one of them. Y-intercept, we let x equal 0, so we get 1 on negative 3 squared minus 1. So that's 1 ninth minus 1. 1 is 9 ninths, so 1 ninth minus 9 ninths is minus 8 ninths. Your x-intercepts, there's going to be two of them. Um, you're going to have let y equal 0. So you're going to have 1 on, what's our equation again? x minus 3 all squared minus 1. Okay, add 1, oh sorry, add 1 to both sides. So 1 equals x minus 3 all squared. I'm going to multiply the denominator of the fraction, multiplying both sides by x minus 3 all squared, gets us to this point. Square root, which is where you're getting your two solutions. x minus 3 is plus or minus square root of 1, which is 1. And so x is 3 plus or minus 1, so, sorry, 3 plus 1 is 4, 3 minus 1 is 2. It makes sense that they are um, 3 plus or minus a value because the asymptote's at 3, and so your x-intercepts should be symmetric about that asymptote. So 3 plus 1 and 3 minus 1. Now this is where you need your scale to be consistent with where you've put your um, asymptote. Okay, so... My, if, if this is x equals 3, then x equals 2 is about here and x equals 4 is about here. Okay, Again, x equals 2 shouldn't be over here. It's got to be closer to the asymptote than it is to the y um, axis. Oh, I knew that would happen. <laughs> Trying to delete that line. Okay, there we go. So I've got my two x-intercepts roughly there. Now my y-intercept is at negative 8 ninths, so that's going to be pretty close to this asymptote. So again, I might not draw it in. I might just know that I want to, I want to be pretty close to the asymptote. Okay. Again, we want to try and be a bit careful about our asymptotic behaviour. It is quite hard with the truncus where it is more extreme, so it does get close to those asymptotes quicker than the hyperbola does. Again, it's a bit about scaling your axes um, so you don't have to travel too far with your asymptote. So again, possibly not, not drawing this bit back here, so we don't need to go quite so far. Um, and then, you know, potentially get a bit wobbly down here. So x-intercepts, 4, 0 and 2, 0. Y-intercept... 0, negative 8 ninths, and there is my truncus. Okay, example 3, sketch the graph of y equals 10 minus 2 over x squared. Okay, so think about we've really got negative 2 over x squared plus 10. Okay, so we've got reflection in the x-axis, so we're going to be dealing with the sort of elephant trunk rather than the tree trunk, we're going to be going down. Um, we've got dilation by 2 from the x-axis. doesn't really impact how we draw our graph, it's just going to affect where the intercepts are. And we've also got translation up by 10. So that means I'm going to have an asymptote at y equals 10. Okay, haven't translated left or right, so my y-axis is still the vertical asymptote. Put my x-axis down here, so I've got room to put my asymptote up here at y equals 10. Um, it's going to be an elephant trunk going this way so we're going to have two x-intercepts that we need to calculate and they should be symmetric about the y-axis. 
So let's calculate those x-intercepts. We're not crossing the y-axis because it's the asymptote, so we don't need to calculate a y-intercept. So 0 equals 10 minus 2 on x squared. Let's add 2 on x squared to both sides. Let's multiply by x squared. Sorry, so we get 2 equals 10 x squared. Let's divide by 10. So that's 1 fifth equals x squared. And so x is plus or minus square root of 1 fifth which is plus or minus 1 on root 5. Or you could rationalise that denominator if you want to be plus or minus root 5 on 5. It doesn't matter. You don't need to give um, rational denominators. They're the same thing. Okay, so again, let's just draw in our truncus. Let's just aim for some symmetry here in terms of... I've got a bit veering away from my y-axis there. All right, again, I find the symmetry with the truncus quite hard. Let's see how we go. Heading out sort of this way. Not too bad. Okay, so x axis, x intercept, sorry, 1 on root 5, 0, and negative 1 on root 5, 0. And there's my graph. Alright, one more truncus. Again, a bit confusing with this dilation or this multiplying factor in here that we really don't want. It's not part of our general form. So thinking about how we can get that out of there. So doing a little algebra before we launch into solving it. So 2x plus 8 all squared. So this is negative 1. Let's factor 2 out of that. Careful because you can't factor it straight out of the squared though. So we've got 2 times x plus 4 all squared, which is negative 1 on 4 times x plus 4 squared, which we can think of as negative a quarter times 1 on x plus 4 all squared. So again, we've got reflection in the x-axis. We've got dilation by a quarter from the x-axis. And we've got translation to the left by 4. So my vertical asymptote is going to be at x equals negative 4. Um, okay, let's think about what we've got happening there. So, no reflection. Oh, we have got reflection, sorry. So it's under the x-axis. Let's perhaps move that across a little. Okay, so x equals negative 4 is my vertical asymptote. My graph is going down under the x-axis. The x-axis is the horizontal asymptote. Okay, um, so we're going to be going this way. So we don't have any x-intercepts, we do just have the one y-intercept over there that we just need to calculate. So, sorry, I've got a lot of room here. So letting x equal 0, we're going to have negative 1 over, I'm going back to the original version of the equation, which should be 0 plus 8 squared, so that's negative 1 on 64. Okay, so very small y-intercept. Again, let's just focus on getting a vaguely accurate and symmetric trunk is drawn. And then we'll worry about everything else. Oops. Okay, so y-intercept here is at 0, negative 1 on 64. Um, no x-intercepts, we've got our asymptote labelled, and so there's our graph. Okay, so here are a couple of truncuses for you to draw as well.